After all of the hype, the idol mostly turned out to be a disappointment, mainly due to the lost potential. The initial premise, exploring the ups and downs a child star turned superstar faces as she mounts a comeback and has to deal with a creepy cult guy weaseling his way into her life, sounded like it had so much promise. It's like edgy, but like in a cool way. Then the show premiered and it was, let's say, not really what people had been hoping for. Have some tact in it the way was, that you say well, it. Yeah, but you know it was awful. We've already covered everything that went wrong with the show. So now we're taking a look at what the show could have been and where it could go if it does manage to get a second season. The difference between me and him is I can actually make you a star. One of the biggest changes between the original direction of the show and what we ended up seeing is the focus. Initially, the show was meant to be an in-depth look at the psyche and experiences of a famous young woman dealing with past abuse while attempting to make her way in an exploitative industry, and how all of that began to dovetail once a charismatic cult leader worked his way into her life. We were supposed to see things from her point of view and through a female lens, with director Amy Simons aiming to create an empathetic, deeply felt take on the pitfalls of superstardom for young women. <laughs> You're having a human moment. We can take a break. But then, allegedly, Tesfaye just couldn't handle the focus not being on his character. And the rest is, unfortunately, history. Hello, Angel. Getting to see the world framed through Jocelyn's eyes in a show that treated her like an actual human being would have made for a much more engaging show, allowing us to go on this journey with her as she battled against all of the forces trying to pull her apart, from industry figures to parasites in her inner circle to her past trauma creeping back up to the cult. Actually getting to see her deal with and work to overcome these struggles could have created a deeply absorbing narrative that explored so many facets of the industry that are often glossed over or ignored. I've never done this without her before. I don't know what to do. And having a female lens wouldn't have necessarily meant that the show would have to pretend that Jocelyn is some perfect angel who can do no wrong, just that it would have likely been far more realistic and fair in its portrayal of her as a person. Instead of the audience being left to guess why she's making any of the choices she does, we could have gone with her on her interior journey, experiencing the roller coaster of emotions in tandem. I just don't wanna like make a fool of myself. I don't want people to like make fun of me. Leaked photos from the pre-takeover set do seem to paint a much different picture from what we ended up getting. Jocelyn appears to have friends and younger sisters, and we even get some real glimpses of her child star past. But all of this seems to have been erased for the final version of the show, which serves to make her feel more like the sex fantasy Levinson and Tesfaye were apparently more interested in creating. All that trauma? Gonna turn into inspiration. Filling out Jocelyn's life and past in a real way would have made her more relatable as a character, and thus made it possible for the audience to connect with her even if some of the specific hurdles she's up against might not be something we necessarily encounter in our everyday lives. I think the dark shit I've been through is pretty f***ing unique too. That elusive maybe was meant to exist, but also maybe not sixth episode also could have gone a long way in helping give the show time to fully expand not just Jocelyn's story, but also all of the other interesting secondary character stories as well. From members of Jocelyn's inner circle like Xander and Leah and Diane, to the uber talented cult members like Isaac and Chloe, to the industry figures like Destiny and Talia. That they all lost screen time to Tedros's rat Tale is a real shame. I don't give a f about anybody's past. Getting to see all of the characters interact more with one another and watching their intricate relationships build and break would have created a much more cohesive and, importantly, interesting narrative. The show as it exists is so disorganized and untethered from anything that feels real that it's nearly impossible to really care about anyone or anything that happens to them. Even the Jocelyn taking over the cult storyline could have been 
been really engaging if done correctly. The inherent parallels between actual cults and the cults of personality created by famous people is certainly an interesting topic to explore. Bask in the warm glow of what it feels like to love me. If drawing on those similarities was indeed the goal, then keeping the main focus of the story on Jocelyn would have helped achieve that. Painting a clearer picture of how she uses her fame and charm to pull in both her millions of fans and people in her real life, for better or worse. With the proper effort and creative care, the show could have become a darkly satirical view into this world of fame and excess and what it really takes to be on top. As it stands, the show mostly just felt like it was written by someone who watched Gone Girl on a plane once and didn't really get it, but definitely thought they could write their own version. No way, baby. I'm it. The biggest downfall of the idol is the loss of all of this great potential. Even with so much talent in front of and behind the scenes, and so many interesting ways the story could have gone, all it took was two people who were a bit too full of themselves to send everything right down the very sleek, overpriced drain. Despite all of the exposés, bad reviews, and relentless mockery online, rumors are swirling that the cast and crew are already gearing up for a second season. This isn't totally surprising, as it's definitely not the first time that hate watchers have boosted a bad show's numbers enough to get it renewed. Though, given how quiet HBO and co have been about the viewership numbers after they started falling post-episode 2, one does wonder just how many people were actually watching by the end. So if there is a second season, one that has to continue on from the mess that was season one, could they turn things around? Well, maybe, if they're willing to make some big changes. The most obvious being having Tedros take a back seat and ideally disappear. Tess Faye was the weakest link when it came to acting, and the shift to focus more on Tedros instead of Jocelyn's interiority was a mistake. Shut the f up! Oh, oh, shut the f up. Yeah, shut the f up. They also need to decide how bad Tedros is really meant to be. At the beginning of season one, he's a cult leader creep who is confirmed to have been incredibly abusive in the past. There is a 400 page trial transcript with details that will raise the hair off of your mother neck. But by the end, it feels like the show wants us to feel bad for him. Like he's just a really dedicated guy that got a little caught up in this crazy music world. These are I, my babies. I can see it. I know it's you. Truthfully, it feels like the former was what Tedros was supposed to be. But then when Tesfaye decided that he should be more of the focus and more directly parallel to himself, then of course he had to be softened and made into not such a bad guy, really, and have everyone else's villainy ratcheted up to make him look better in comparison. We ruined him. <laughs> Shifting back to Jocelyn would also give the show the ability to fix a huge problem from season one. The surprise twist that she is actually the villain and secretly in control. We are talking to my people, they're an extension of me. Tedros, these are my f people now. Her turn comes pretty much out of nowhere near the end of season one, feels unearned, and doesn't really make a lot of sense, at least given the very little they actually let us know about the character. There were a few attempts to make it clear that Jocelyn wasn't quite falling for Tedros's shtick in the same ways the others had, but narratively, it just doesn't feel like her villain arc was something they had planned from the beginning. It just feels like one more thing they tacked on for shock value as they were scribbling down scenes the morning of the shoot. But if Tedros was out of the way for the second season, and actual writers were given the chance to craft the story properly, it could be an opportunity to finally gain an understanding of what's really going on with Jocelyn and why she's behaving the way she is. She controls everything around her and everyone. 
and now she's doing it to you. Diane, working her way into Jocelyn's inner circle just to turn on her, was treated as an afterthought. So it would be great to get more insight into her life and choices, and to have more opportunities for Jenny to actually have lines and sing and dance. And that goes for the other cult members as well. We got little peeks into their lives before the cult, but it would be really great to actually learn more about them. I was living on the streets. I was a heroin addict. <laughs> <laughs> and Tedros just saw me. Jocelyn and Xander's thorny history as child stars together is hinted at a bit, until she gets Tedros to tase Xander into submission, and he slides right back into follower mode. You don't understand the f years that this bitch has taken from me. The f career that I could have had. Ah! I'll stop lying, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. Unpacking what really happened between them and how it led to Xander essentially just becoming one of Jocelyn's powerless helpers instead of a star in his own right would not only flesh out his character, but Jocelyn's as well. Leah, the only really normal character on the show, had enough, packed her bags, and left by the end of season one. And who can blame her? Oh, come on, come on, come on, Leah, Leah. But her character provided important grounding to the show. Their chat in episode one is the only time we see Jocelyn seem to feel safe or emotionally connected to someone. And she works as a good insanity barometer for the audience, reminding us that, yeah, all of this stuff happening is really crazy. So if the show wants to work towards feeling like a show about real human beings that exist in the world, it'll be important to find a way to bring Leah back. And given that she does seem to care about Jocelyn in a way that no one else does, it shouldn't be hard to pull her back into the fold. At the end of the day, the most important thing the creators need going into season two is to have a real plan from the get-go and stick to it. Given all of the talk about Levinson's issues with this both on this show and Euphoria, it does seem that he needs to humble himself and hand the reins over. A proper showrunner in control of the writer's room would help make sure that narrative decisions make sense and are set up and paid off. And that, you know, the scripts are actually actually finished before the day of the shoot. If the show is able to secure a second season, they're going to need to do a lot of real work to pull people in. The oh my god, danger, sexy scandals ahead hype barely managed to keep people watching and talking about the show past episode two. So if early reviews drop that it's just more of the same poorly paced fantasies of two of the world's most unimaginative people, it'll likely be a wrap before the new season even drops. But the question is, what are you going to do now? From the beginning, there was a lot of interest in the promise of what the show could be. So if they're able to make it clear that they've gone back to the drawing board and have really done the creative work to make a second season worthwhile, it could pull the show out of the dumpster. There are still little glimmers of potential within this story, but it remains to be seen if the show will help them burn brighter or just let it all fade away. That's the take. Click here to watch the video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.